skills. So each of the three energy systems, the ATP PC system, anaerobic glycolysis system, and the aerobic system, they each require some sort of fuel to produce the energy to help rebuild ATP. And so the ATP PC system um, is one of the first systems we'll talk about, and it uses phosphate creatine. Your teacher might refer to this as creatine phosphate, the beaker might refer to it as CP or creatine phosphate or PC or phosphate creatine. Any of these is acceptable. Uh, so Vika does accept a variety of answers for the name of this. Like, it doesn't matter which name you use, it's all the same thing, which Vika um, like, recognises. What is phosphocreatine? So it's actually a chemical fuel. I'm going to emphasise this point. It's a chemical fuel and not a food fuel. So we'll be looking at food fuels and chemical fuels throughout this uh, lecture or lectorial. Um, but PC is a chemical fuel, okay? So make sure you know that because it might come up in your exam. So it's actually used by the system called the ATPPC system. So if you look at this, it kind of sounds well, the adenosine triphosphate phosphocreatine system, which is kind of a big name, but you can say ATPPC. You should say ATPPC. So when the phosphate and creatine break apart, this produces energy that we can then use to rebuild ADP into ATP. So we use this phosphocreatine as a chemical fuel to recycle ADP back into ATP, okay? Um, so really keep in mind that we don't use PC for movement. We use it to rebuild ADP into ATP. And that, that snapping of the ATP third phosphate and transforming it into ADP gives us the energy that we use for our movements or our muscular contractions. So keep that in mind, please. Um, I'm just getting some water. I'm still recovering from being sick, so I'm really sorry if I'm not, like, super peppy. If you've ever been to one of these before, I get so excited about this topic because... I love it and I'm a nerd for it, but right now I'm kind of not as peppy. <clears throat> so I'm sorry about that, but hopefully you feel okay with it anyway and the content isn't too fast or anything. Okay, phosphate creatine. There's about 10 to 15 seconds worth of PC, which can be stored at the muscles, and so it's actually used during extremely high intensity activities, such as sprinting, as it's able to produce energy at a rapid rate. So PC stores can be replenished by staying still or performing a passive recovery and can also be replenished during steady state. So just going to reassert a few things you need to know here. You do need to know that there's about 10 to 15 seconds worth of PC stored at the muscles. That 10 to 15 seconds worth of PC is used to rebuild ADP into ATP. That PC, or phosphate creatine, is used during extremely high intensity activities such as sprinting. So if I just get up and start doing star jumps right now, my body's going to be using that phosphate creatine to rebuild ATP from ADP. Okay, so I start exercising, my body's going to break that third phosphate of the ATP into ADP and inorganic phosphate. So it's going to snap that bond to release that energy for my muscular contractions. And my body's actually going to rebuild that ATP, the adenosine triphosphate, by using phosphate creatine, the chemical fuel. Because I've got about 10 to 15 seconds worth of that stored at my muscles. <coughs> so PC stores can be replenished by staying still. So if I just sit still for three minutes, I restore about 90, um, above 90% of my PC stores. So I think it's about 97%. So really just performing a passive recovery, sitting still or standing still, allows me to replenish these stores. This can also be replenished during steady state, which is something we might look at later on. Okay, as I mentioned before, phosphate creatine is a chemical fuel. However, we have got a bunch of different fuels which are um, actually food fuels, not chemical fuels. So phosphate creatine is the only chemical fuel we'll look at. Another really important fuel that we need to discuss is carbohydrates. And so these are a food fuel that's found in many foods such as pasta, bread, rice, potatoes, grains like quinoa, couscous, stuff like that. These are all carbohydrates. So... You do need to know a few foods which are carbohydrates. Our main ones are pasta, bread, rice, but do keep a few in mind and be able to list them in case you get asked a question about this on the exam. So carbs are used by the anaerobic glycolysis system, which is another system we'll talk about, and the aerobic system, which is another system, as a fuel. So the ATPPC system does not use carbohydrates. It uses phosphocreatine, whereas these two systems, the anaerobic glycolysis system and the aerobic system, both use it as a fuel. So there are quite a lot of words that we use relating to carbohydrates. So carbohydrates, um, well, an associated word we use is glycogen. We also have glucose 
um, and sugar. So carbs, glycogen, glucose, sugar, these are all like associated terms which we use, not synonymously exactly, but quite similarly to carbs. They're all kind of like relating or they're different forms of carbohydrate. And so if I have some bread right now and I eat it, um, the carbohydrates in that bread are going to be stored in my muscle and in my liver as glycogen, which is a kind of uh, many branched structure. So it's kind of like a convenient, neatly packaged form of glycogen. When I need energy, that glycogen is going to be broken down to glucose. So my body will break down that glycogen and release it in the blood as glucose or blood glucose or blood sugar. So essentially carbohydrates are a type of simple sugar because um, in their real form they are glucose. Our body will store it as glycogen. When I need that sugar, my body will release it in the form of glucose. It will get into the blood and be drawn or taken to the muscles or wherever I need it in order for that ADP to be converted back into ATP. So, similar to how phosphocreatine breaks apart to produce energy, this breakdown of glycogen to glucose produces the energy needed to rebuild ATP from ADP. I'm really dry right now. I'm just thirsty. Cool. So, breaking down glycogen into glucose allows us to produce some energy. This energy doesn't give us the energy for muscular contractions but rather it allows us to rebuild ATP from ADP and as such we can actually snap that bond off the ATP and um, use it to produce energy for our muscular contractions and do our star jumps like go sprinting or anything else which is a muscular contraction. So I mentioned before we've got about 10 to 15 seconds worth of phosphocreatine stored at the muscles. In terms of carbohydrates we've got about two hours worth of glycogen stored in our muscles and liver. So in events which are longer than two hours, such as a marathon, glycogen depletion may be an issue, but unless you're running like more than two hours, you're probably not going to have to like fuss too much about it because your body will store quite a lot of glycogen. I don't know if anyone's ever done like cross-country training or like half marathon or anything like that or full marathon maybe, but my cross-country coach would always be like, make sure you carbo load the night before and so you like have pasta the night before your race because it means that we can store some excess glycogen in our muscles and liver for um, energy, which can be used to actually rebuild that ATP from ADP later on during the day or during our race. So you can actually like store it up a bit. Um, I'm not sure we talked too much about that today, but keeping stuff like this in mind is good to talk about in your exam. So as exercise intensity increases, the use of carbohydrates to produce energy also increases. So pretty much as exercise gets more difficult, your body will rely more on carbohydrates to produce energy rather than other possible fuel sources such as, sources, such as fats. Uh, and this is because carbohydrates take less oxygen to break down than fats, making them more efficient fuel. I didn't really understand this when I was in high school, but your body um, at rest, like right now, is going to be burning quite a lot of fat. And this is because fat requires lots of oxygen to break it down. When you're running, like during a race or a half marathon or something, you're not getting sufficient amounts of oxygen, um, particularly at the start. And so your body is going to be relying on something which doesn't need a lot of oxygen to break it down. And so carbohydrates actually don't need any oxygen to break them down. They can be broken down anaerobically, which means no oxygen required. And so that's why our body tends to rely more on um, breaking down carbohydrates as our energy source or our food fuel source. Cool. Um, I don't see any questions, but if there are any questions, just put them in the chat and I will get back to you. So we have another food fuel, um, just like carbohydrates. So fats and lipids are a food fuel. I said before that carbohydrates, glycogen, glucose, blood sugar, these are all like the same thing, sort of. We kind of use these words um, in conjunction with one another. Um, we have the same situation here with fats, lipids, free fatty acids, triacylglycerides, um, triglycerides, all of these different words we kind of use as like an associated word for fat. So keep that in mind. So fats are another food fuel, meaning that we can get them from the foods that we consume or in our diet, just like carbs, except they're found in different foods. So fats are found in things such as meat, avocado. I think avocado is a really good option to go for in the exam. Oils and butter, amongst other things. So fats, as I mentioned before, are a fuel used by the aerobic system. And this is because fats actually require lots of oxygen to break them down, um, like a huge amount of oxygen and so when you're at rest like right now you're getting enough oxygen you're not out of breath hopefully you're just kind of sitting here taking in lots of oxygen and so your body can actually utilize that oxygen to break down the fats fats must be broken down aerobically they need oxygen to break down so you can't break down fats using the anaerobic 
by Collis' system, okay? Uh, just a bit more about fats in general. So they're stored as triglycerides in the muscle. Um, so we eat some avocado. This fat is stored in our muscles as triglycerides. When we need that energy from the fat, we break the triglycerides down into free fatty acids or FFAs. And similar to the breakdown of glycogen, this allows us to produce energy which can be used to reboot ADP back into ATP. Okay? Oh, that's a lot. Um, yeah, so just to summarize, recognize that it's a food fuel. Recognize a few foods that it's found in, such as avocado, oils, butter. Know that it's used by the aerobic system as it requires lots of oxygen to break it down. And that it's stored as triglycerides in the muscles and then broken down to free fatty acids. <clears throat> as I mentioned before, it's a preferred fuel at rest because right now at rest we've got sufficient oxygen to break them down effectively. As exercise intensity increases, the use of fats as a fuel decreases. And if you think about this, if I just get up and start running right now, I'm going to be pretty out of breath, okay? And so that's because my exercise intensity has increased from like nothing to probably kind of a maximal level from sprinting. And so as a result, my uh, use of fats will decrease because I'm not getting sufficient amounts of oxygen to break down the fats. And as I mentioned before, our body can actually break down carbohydrates anaerobically. So it doesn't actually need um, oxygen to break down carbohydrates. And so when I'm kind of out of breath, the body will be like, you know what's a really good fuel use right now? Carbohydrates. Because no oxygen, right? So yeah, as exercise intensity increases, the use of fats as a fuel decreases, but the use of carbohydrates as a fuel will increase. I feel like I should set a timer because I'm going to be aware of how long I'm going on for. Um, I reckon it's fine for now. So, food fuel contribution. When a person is at rest, fats are the predominant fuel source. Um, during some maximal exercise, carbohydrates contribute roughly two thirds of the fuel source. During maximal exercise, intensity glycogen is a sole food fuel source, and phosphocreatine may also be used, but this is a chemical fuel. Carbohydrates are the preferred fuel source over fats during exercise because they take less oxygen to produce the same amount of energy in comparison to fats. As I mentioned before.